Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Made by Amanda May. That's me, Amanda May, and here we make things, build things, create things, DIY things, and basically anything that is hands-on that needs a little creativity and also a little know-how with some tools where I show you how to do things. Today, I am making over a toy box, which was old and primitive and just, I, I don't know, it wasn't in great shape. Uh, and we made it into something pretty that I'll actually have in my house, or maybe I'll sell it. I don't know. I haven't found a spot for it exactly yet, but it's great storage. So let's go ahead and check this out. Here is the toy box. Clearly a toy box. Somebody put this stencil painting on it to be fancier, I'm thinking. And then some kids look like they put some stickers on the sides. The lid is fully functional and opens up, so I have some nice storage in there, which is fantastic, um, but didn't open all the way. So first, this is just leaking randomly. That's awesome. I'm gonna try and get these stickers off. You think goo gone would be best for that? I don't know yet. That one just came right off. Vinegar and water solution. So as you just heard me say, what I'm using here in this spray bottle is actually a mixture of water and vinegar which is a fantastic solution to a lot of things. It'll take a lot of things off. It also cleans a lot of things, but I just let the sticker get saturated in those two things combined and then use my putty knife to go ahead and scrape it off, which made sure that I didn't damage the wood underneath too bad. Um, although after everything came off, I did just go ahead and sand the entire surface to smooth anything out. All right, here we took our electric sander and started sanding away at this paint job that was on it that I was not feeling. And as you can see, it's coming off pretty well. Um, this did take a little bit of time as well to accomplish, and I really had to go in at it strategically, um, making sure it came out even. And then after I got all of the paint off itself, then I go ahead, as you can see, and sanded the rest of the box. So it was an entirely smooth surface. I did the sides as well. You just want to prep your surface for cleaning, and who knows how long this thing's been around so that the paint adheres to it better. Oh, and look, a puppy dog. Um, and yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Sand it out, and then once you've done so, clean it up, dust it all off, and you'll be ready to paint. So these are a little bit lifted, so what I'm going to do is just put a simple nail, just like there are already two on each end, but one right in the middle just to help secure it before I actually paint the box. So just a little nail tack, not a big deal. Just going to line it up with the other ones, right about in the middle. So I have decided to paint this white on the bottom and I think we're going to stay in the top part where you, you would sit or you know the lid here, um, that dark color, but first I'm going to do the white and see how that comes out and then we'll go from there. It may end up all being white, I don't know yet, but I got this plenty of this white paint still so let's see how it goes. Here we go with the white paint and a brush. Again, this is a trim paint that I still had left over. It is meant for painting wood, so it really covered very well. And I didn't really have to do a second coat anywhere on it. I do want to note, you always want to put a drop cloth down 
Otherwise, you are going to get paint on whatever you're painting on. And additionally, you saw that I actually made sure the trim on the edges are done, but I did not do the interior. Uh, it just was unnecessary. So last time I used this product with a brush, it actually kind of ruined the brush. brush. And it says you can use a cloth, so we're gonna try a cloth. It is the same gel stain I've been using on a bunch of other stuff. Um, and I'm just gonna do the top in it. I really like the color of the top currently. However, there's a lot of like nicks and dings and you know, whatever. And we already have this product, so you know, we're cheap. Just gonna make sure there's nothing on. I did tape up around the sides here with the tape that I put down to paint the white. Hopefully it'll help keep it protected. Let's see how this works out. Oh, it's actually doing really good coverage. Um, and not as thick as the paintbrush, which I'm happy about. I didn't want it that dark, to be honest. Okay. Let's see if I can show this to you guys a little better. Ugh, flaw. So you can see how it's like the wood is still coming through, so I'm really fond of that. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's do the whole thing. Time lapse. <laughs> this process worked really, really well. I'm very impressed. And I would say always use a cloth instead of a paintbrush. The paintbrush was a fail and a beginner's mistake for me. This was just a piece of t-shirt, an old t-shirt that I no longer needed or cared for, but I kept around for rag purposes such as this. And you do want to make sure you're getting all the edges. So here's your final look and then it needed to dry. As you can see, all that wood grain is coming through, which is really pretty, and it's a really nice, um, kind of like a texture against the flat, flat white. So I feel like this uh, blankness needed something, and so I found these little wooden appliques, so to speak. Um, they're laser cuts, so they're all identical. At the craft store, they were like, I think maybe $2 each. But now the biggest thing is going to be decide where to put them. I'm thinking, I'm put them in the corners for sure, like so. And then the better question is, how to arrange the ones in the middle, or do I even want the ones in the middle? That looks pretty cool. My other thought. Take these, like so. Sorry if this is a little uneven. I don't know, maybe something like this. Eh, I don't know if it's too much or just right. But regardless, I'm gonna go ahead and stain them and then we'll decide after that. Maybe they'll look better. Okay, so we've got it all set up. Uh, you just need a piece of, like this is a t-shirt and some rag, and then I do recommend putting a glove on underneath because it soaks through the t-shirt and then your hand is all stained. So I'm just gonna try this by hand and see how it goes. You don't need, you don't need a whole lot. I don't know if you guys can see this. Let me see if I can do this. Without making it super dark. Except it's going super dark. Okay, well, listen, peanut gallery. I was hoping this would. Turn out lighter? Mm hmm. Let's see if I can rub some of it off. Not really. We'll see, it gets on your fingers. I 
can get some of it off of here. I'm a little bit lighter. It's not super dark, but you can still see the wood coming through, so it's not too bad. All right, moving on to the next ones. Once they had dried fully, I went ahead and put them where I thought I wanted them, and then it was time to adhere them to the toy box itself. So I took some wood glue and a paintbrush so that it didn't make a huge mess, and just made sure I had a nice layer, but not too thick, because then it would just go everywhere. Um, all over the box, all over everything, and you don't really want that, you don't really want to see it. So just a light layer on the whole design. And once you get it completely covered, you're gonna put it where you want it. And what I did was I put something heavy on top of it to really make sure it like clamped down. Normally you can use clamps on things, but in this case, I just use some staples, because they're heavy. So yeah. Do that with all of them, and then you just gotta wait for it to dry. Here you go, ta-da! I really enjoy the way this looks. I think those appliques really gave it a finished and polished look. Without them, it was kind of bland and uh, just looked, it looked like it needed something, so we gave it something. Always use your imagination, see what else you can figure out. And there you have it. I hope you guys like the final product. I think it looks pretty great. I'm very happy with it. And I hope you guys are a little inspired to check things out and maybe check out a thrift store and see what else you guys can find and be your own made by whatever your name is, not Amanda Bay. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more of my shenanigans. I love doing them, and I hope you do too. So I hope you guys have a great day, and we we'll see you next time.